Hello again. In the last two episodes, we looked at local and remote port forwarding. Today, we will be looking at dynamic port forwarding over SOX proxies. This is useful if certain web pages are blocked from within your environment or if the web page you're trying to access has geo restrictions. In principle, this works for Netflix, for example, although in reality it usually doesn't if you use a well known service provider such as Amazon Web Services to tunnel. For this demo, I'm going to spin up a server with DigitalOcean. I'm using Pet Snippet Manager and its templating functionality, as I've shown in a previous video, to spin up the box. While we wait for the droplet to start, let's look at the command line options and a quick diagram. As you know, SSH supports local, remote and dynamic port forwarding. For dynamic forwarding, there's just a single command line option, minus D, followed by the optional bind address and the port to listen on. Let's look at an example. The user instructs her SSH client to connect to example.com and to open a SOX proxy on port 1080. Assuming that she has configured her browser to use that proxy, all future requests are sent via the SOX proxy over the existing SSH connection and forwarded from example.com to the destination, in this case Google. Unlike with local port forwarding, the ultimate destination is determined at runtime. In other words, it's dynamic. Let's give it a try. First of all, we need to check whether the DigitalOcean droplet is up. That's looking good. I will need the droplet's IP in a second. As usual, I'm using Tmux. Then I SSH into that new instance using dynamic port forwarding on port 1080. Once the connection is established, we can test the SOX proxy using Firefox. First of all, we're going to look up our public IP address when not using the proxy. Then we configure Firefox to use our proxy. If we now refresh the page, we should find our IP address to be identical to the one of the SSH server we connected to. And it is. Nice. So how can we use the proxy from the command line? Let us try that too. There are various tools, including TSOX. First of all, I'm just going to use plain curl to call the same web domain. The IP is the same as what Firefox initially reported. Now I'm using the exact same curl command, but wrapped in TSOX. And as you can see, that is the same IP as that of our SSH server. You need to install TSOX to use it and configure it in etctsox.conf. Here's my config. Very basic, as you can see. And that is all for today's video, which also marks the end of this SSH mini-series. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.